Good morning, and thank you for joining us for today's church school lesson entitled, Why Are You Afraid? This is a sometimes a rhetorical question, but it is a question of our faith. Let us begin with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you now for your son, Jesus. Father, we want to thank you for your grace and your mercy. Father, I want to thank you because you are the maker and the creator of heaven and earth and all mankind. Father, I want to thank you also that you provided us with a prayerful line that when we see danger or fear in our hearts and in our minds, we know that you will comfort us and be with us and, and take care of us. So we ask you now to strengthen our faith, strengthen our trust, make our hearts clean and secure, that knowing you and believing in you is all that we need. We thank you now and ask that you bless this, this reading and studying of your word that your people may leave this lesson with a better understanding of your divine power. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our scripture reading um, key verse today is, he said to them, why are you afraid? You of little faith. Then he got up and rebuked the wind and the sea, and there was a dead calm. In other words, peace. Be still. Verse 23 through 27 from Matthew uh, 8 will be our scripture reading for today. Verse 23. And when he got and when he when he got into the boat, his disciple followed him. A windstorm arose on the sea, so great the boat was being swamped by the waves. But he was asleep. Verse 25. And they went and woke him up, saying, Lord, save us. We are perishing. And he said to them, Why are you afraid, you of little faith? Then he got up and rebuked the wind and the sea, and there was a dead calm. They were amazed. Verse 27, saying, What sort of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? Our scripture lesson is, shows us that even the disciples who were among Jesus doing many of his teaching and, and examples and, and the miracles that he performed, um, lives that he saved, healing that he that he uh, touched in, and, and those that were sick. At some point in life, it shows that we take our eyes off of the divine power and the relationship that we can be supported by when we know in our hearts and know in our minds that not only being prayerful, but understanding that Jesus is God is Lord and Savior and that He is with us all the time even in the midst of our storm, even in the midst of pandemic, even in the midst of our financial shortfall, we can call and we can trust that God will be with us. God will deliver us and we should not have this fear like last week, this anxiety that take us, that allow the devil to take our eye cause us to take our eyes off of Jesus. 
let's get into our lesson introduction the first lesson look at a powerful teaching by Jesus Christ the lesson also deals with power this time it is a display of authority over the storm of rough winds and raging waters. The storm occurs on the Sea of Galilee, but no doubt, as you follow this discussion, you will reflect on the symbolic storm people face in their Christian walk. In this regard, consider to whom you look for, look for, for help in times of calamities also Think about the emotion that grips you in this life storm. Does fear overwhelm you? Or do you maintain strong confidence in God's ability to deliver you? And what assurance do you have that despite the fearlessness of, your, of life storms, you will make it to the other side, to eternal life with the Savior. What the disciple faced in the storm, in that storm experienced with Jesus, had a profound effect on their lives and the ministry. We can safely say they were never the same again. They saw Jesus in a new light. I invite us to consider the effects of life storms on our view of God. Sadly, storm situations have broken some people, sent them running away from the church. But storms can and should drive us into a closer fellowship with God and other believers. Mature believers recognize that God is still our best option for protection in life storms. The Sea of Galilee storm blew the disciple closer to God and gave them more powerful testimony. What does your storm experience do for your relationship with God? The Bible story. If we read the story in the text in a casual manner, we see a simple storm rescue such as simple view might tempt us to compare the situation with other storms, rescues we have seen, maybe in the media like the National Geographic or the Weather Channel. But there was nothing simple about the events given in the Gospels. To prove this, we retell the story in English with the intensity in the original language permits. One day, Jesus invited his close disciples on a boat ride with him to do ministry on the other side of the Sea of Galilee. We should note that the disciples were veteran fishermen who were familiar with the Sea of Galilee and had ridden out many storms in the years of the sea. The trip started calmly, like prior voyages on the gigantic lake. The disciples saw no signs of intimate storms, so Jesus found a comfortable position in the boat and went to sleep. When the boat was about halfway across the sea, a raging storm arose. This storm was worse than any other storm the fishermen had endured before. They were terrified. They stared destruction and the death in the face and so in desperation, the disciples frantically um, shout out Jesus at the top of their voice. They woke Jesus and asked him to do something about the wind storm, the wild storm. They saw Jesus as the only hope out of the terrible ordeal. Jesus awoke. He was not pleased. He blasted the disciples for their faithlessness were they shocked? They wondered what exactly Jesus expected them to do in such a deadly storm. While they stood on the deck in shock, Jesus calmly turned to the sea and by mere words commanded the sea and the wind to behave calmly. As soon as the words left Jesus' mouth, the storm stopped. The terrified disciples were speechless. 
Jesus whom they were with day and night by mere words command the sea and the wind and the elements obeyed. They had never seen or heard anything like this before. The experience drove the disciples to the conclusion Jesus is a special man with mystical powers. In fact, he had to be whom he claimed to be. These elements boosted their view of Jesus, increased their trust in him, and, it, and enhanced their testimony of Christ to the world. Yes, despite the traumatic experience, the disciples came out of with a deeper admiration of Jesus and God's power. Does this happen today? Can dreadful events drive people closer to God? Let us follow our case. Let's follow me with to case study. At the beginning of this lesson, I assert <clears throat> that the disciples came out of the storm more informed and spiritually healthier. For our case study, we follow up on this thought. Can people really grow emotionally and spiritually after a terrible storm experience? In August 2015, the HuffPost.com carried an article that looked at the mental health landscape in New Orleans 10 years after Hurricane Katrina. The article by Carolyn Gregory in Katrina's Aftermath, Psychologists Find Trauma as Well as Resilience, gave deep insight into the non-physical post disaster battles storm survivor undergoes. The article painted a complex picture of serious, unheaval mental health during the physical recovery in New Orleans. Yet, the researchers saw several bright spots in the darkness which followed Katrina's onslaught. The study was part of Resilience and Survivors of Katrina project, along with other findings. It shows that many Katrina survivors experienced mental health issues related to this disaster. But researchers were surprised to observe that a number of survivors who also showed remarkable, remarkable resilience and even growth in the wake of the trauma. Dr. Jean Rose, a psychologist at the University of Massachusetts in Boston, was one of the project chief investigators. He noted that the data revealed that natural disaster and other traumatic events could be engines of growth, resulting in a kind of spiritual awakening. Dr. Rose explained the paradox this way. A high percentage of survivors struggle with post-traumatic stress disorder and other mental conditions before going into experience which is known as post-traumatic growth. Other experience mental illness related to the disaster that ultimately did not lead to resilience or growth. This study, among others, that support its finding confirmed that the disastrous impact and calamity had on people's mental and social health. Yet, it was not all doom and gloom. A follow-up survey which built on the risk research highlighted that among low-income, unmarried African-American women who survived the storm, but half of the respondent would be considered resilient, meaning they experienced an increase in psychological distress after the disaster, but returned to pre-disaster distress level within three years. The report went further and noted roughly 30% of survivors experienced post-traumatic growth. This growth took the form of improved relationship, greater empathy and compassion, enhanced spirituality, and improved sense of personal strength the ability to envision new possibilities in life. 
Such report including one from Joy of Osofsky, a Louisiana State University psychologist, confirmed that several survivors of the disaster grew significantly because of the storm experience. The report observed that several observers felt they also learned a lot and because of the experience would be better able to cope with other advers adversities in their lives. Of course, people do not invite or welcome storms or disasters of any kind. Nonetheless, we must keep before us the truth and that tragedies can make us stronger and more mature. In the aftermath of the disciples' um, Galilee storm experience, we find great personal lessons for our lives. As noted in Isaiah 61 and 3, we can find beauty in the ashes of disaster. Life application. In the storm situation we referred to in two pre preceding sections, several Christians perished based on historical accounts when disaster impact a country or community. Christians as a group get no special exception tickets. People of faith have spiritual resources that equip them to weather disaster better. However, we must accept that at times in our lives we will have to face and deal with various storms. The hope and mindset we bring to these disasters will decide whether we sink or swim or better to better outcome. It is therefore wise and advisable for us to check our emotional, emotional and spiritual disaster preparedness. Before a storm hits, we check on supplies of water food, and other emergency supplies. Likewise, we, all, we should check our emotional and spiritual capacities prior to disaster. We must adopt a model of the Boy Scouts and be, and be prepared to face the storms of life. Unless we have a, a valid worldview of disasters, we can become despondent when they knock on our doors. Believing that our God has, has forsaken us. In, in the Galilee storm experience, the disciples had Jesus physically in the boat with them. While they did not know what the Lord would do, they looked to him for survival. This set a wonderful example for us to follow. <clears throat> in our storm, whether physical or symbolic, we must call on God for help. We should never take upheaval in our lives as evidence that God has abandoned us. On the contrary, such turmoil can be blessed opportunity for us to prove our God love for us. Don't force believers to answer the rhetorical question. The Apostle Paul falls in Romans 8 and 35. If you are not certain, you can say nothing can separate us from the love of Christ. Make that issue a matter of intense prayer and meditation. As believers, we cannot doubt in our mind that God cared for us. With the assurance David expressed in Psalms 23, Psalm 23, we must know that even when we walk through the valley of death, we can fear no evil. 
For if our hearts are in the right place, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. If our lesson does anything for us today, we should be able to answer these questions for ourselves. Place yourself in the boat, list and describe the fears that disciple might have had when the storm overtook the boat. Number two, in what instance, instance have you come through in life storms where your faith have been strengthened? Who accompanied you through your storm? Number three, some scientists argue that storms frequently and intensely can continue to increase. For example, the hurricanes and tropical storms in the Atlantic and that this is due to the climate change, that what are your thoughts about this? What can people of faith do to address these concerns? I hope you have enjoyed today's lesson and I hope as a result, it causes us to think causes us to prayer, our prayer life to increase, causes us our faith to increase, our trust even stronger, that no matter what we face in life, we have a God and a Savior that we can depend on. Our closing prayer. Heavenly Father, I believe that in times of storms, you are my hiding place. I know the storms of my life can be scary and I will, and it will test my faith in you. Dear Lord, in these testing times, help me keep my eyes on you and your love for me. In Jesus' name, amen. May God bless you and may you also enjoy the rest of our service.